You might ask why we need a weed whip. We don't. Hey there guys, do you know what is just around the corner? Spring, spring is just around the corner and do you know what that means? Spring cleaning. So as we were doing some of our own spring cleaning, we figured everybody else might wanna know how we organize our RV basement. So we are gonna tell you some of our favorite hacks. Today, we're gonna do some stuff, show you some things, and that's gonna be our video. We knew the Can-Am wasn't gonna fit in here and we wouldn't get anything that was gonna take up the whole garage. So we decided to make shelves along the side instead. We actually fit a ton in this garage. We've got all our fluids for our oil changes and all that stuff. We got tools up front. We put the motorcycle in here. We put the bicycles in here. We've got a ton of stuff that fits in here. We are Tetris masters. Yes, definitely. <laughs> And then we hang stuff on the wall over here. We were so sick of these handled tools like the broom and the rake and everything just getting thrown in the other basements and they were just in the way and we were sick of it. So we went to Walmart and we got, what is it called? Hyper tough, quick release, mop and broom holder. That, but then we got the track to put it all but on But they too. also have some like other stuff. So if you go to Walmart, you can find this like track and then, oh, sorry. That's my face. <laughs> and then you could put like different hooks basically on them. And that's what we did. So put like all of our brooms and rakes and weed whip on there. So they were out of the way and not in the basement anymore. Since we're boondocking all the time, we really don't need to get to our electrical cords. So we kind of hid that back there. Five gallon buckets for like washing the toys and stuff. I got all my fitting, air fittings and electrical stuff right there. These bins we got at Harbor Freight. They're the cheapest ones you can buy that have like actual bins that you can pull out instead of like just the dividers. So that's why I got these ones because they have actual bins. And we have each one labeled to like what is in there. So it's nice to just stack them all up. And if you need something in particular, just to come over here and pick out which one you need. Moving on to the first pass-through storage, what we call the tool basement. Over here we have a tote of our sewer hoses. We have a random bin tote down there in the middle. But honestly, the totes have been a great use of space because you can stack them. They fit in there pretty nicely. They're flat on top, so you can put stuff on top of them if you need to. But yeah, I, I highly suggest having at least a box for all your sewer stuff because all of the sewer stuff that we have is right here. These are the levers for them and then the um, pipe that it all comes out of on there too. So having a box full of all of your sewer hoses and everything you need when you dump your tanks is nice and easy and accessible right where you need it. Over on the other side of the tool basement is all of the actual tools. You can see we have a couple of Milwaukee packouts that Cam organizes into each thing. There's a one for sockets, one for electrical stuff, and so on and so forth. We thought packouts would be a great like storage thing. Like, oh, they stack, they latch together. They're they're all right, but the thing is, is like, if I need to get to the bottom one, I got to take all three of them out, and it really it's just not ideal for this scenario. The shelves actually work a lot better than the packouts. Another thing we could do that we just haven't, just because they're kind of expensive. And is we really want to though. We do really want them, is is they make like a like a pull out drawer for in here. It can like pull out either side and whatnot. It's actually really cool. And we just, they're really expensive and we don't like spending money. We also found this um, holder, I guess you can call it, to put the torch in for like starting fires. I don't know, I always got freaked out from just having it rolling around in here, thinking that it was gonna accidentally press a button and then we we're just gonna start the rig on fire. Luckily that hasn't happened, but we also found this to put it in. So now I don't have to worry about anything accidentally pressing the button. So this used to be our outside kitchen and we've pretty much repurposed it into a outside workbench. This used to have like a pretty shitty cooktop, so we took it and we threw it away. <laughs> bye bye. And then, yeah, now it's my workbench. Got my tools, battery charger for all the tools. You know, 
beer fridge still. Moving up to the front basement on the passenger side, we have a lot of like what I call like our household stuff. We have our cooler in there and we have our grill and little table camping chairs, camping mat that we usually keep in there. But we also have a lot of like other household use stuff. Um, the tote that you see in there is full of winter stuff. We have a couple of suitcases just in case we ended up needing them when we went home for the holidays, we used those, so that was nice. If you look more closely in here, we also have a step stool, which has come in handy a couple times because I'm short. When we did our battery install, I didn't want to take up any of our storage space. So I put our batteries behind the wall with our inverter behind the wall. There's a ton of space behind the walls on these fifth wheels that are not used. So that's a huge space saving tip is you can, especially if you're doing a battery inverter setup, you can do most of that behind the wall in most of these fifth wheels. Over on the other side of that pass through front bay, we have our water bay, which obviously controls like where the water goes, flushing tanks, filling tanks, etc. We also have um, a couple of totes here. The one on the bottom is for electrical stuff. So like if we're at a campground on the rare occasion, we have adapters for like 30 amp, 20 amp, etc. We also have on the top one, all of the stuff for filling our fresh tanks. So we actually have a couple of um, quick connect nozzles. Uh, we have a spray nozzle in there, water hose, filters, that kind of stuff for when we need to fill the water or do anything with the fresh water tanks is all in that top box there. Over here also, we do have a couple of extension cords hanging up on the wall because the extension cords got in the way. They were annoying to deal with. So we put them on hangers up on the wall and honestly, it has worked perfect. They have not moved. They're all wrapped up and organized and not in the way. It's been, it's been great. One thing a lot of people overlook is like storage up on top of the generator. There's actually a ton of storage up there. Now we have an air compressor up there, a hose reel. We have a tote of air tools. And I mean, I could literally go crawl up there if I wanted to. Also in here, we keep all our leveling stuff. This is where the factory batteries were. We repurposed this for leveling blocks. Uh, we have some other stuff in here. So whether you're packing up your camper for just the weekend or to head out full time, we hope that you found a couple of useful tips in here. Our most used tips are definitely to label things and to use the boxes. That is what has come in most handy. We've used that since day one and has absolutely saved a ton of room. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Right, Ruben? <laughs> he wants you to like this video also. Check out our Grand Design 376 TH Tour or this Riverstone 42 FSKG. You gotta make one of them work. I give up. <laughs>